meeting? Yes, you were. That little boy that had uh, the twins friend that had a, a stroke because no, of what? COVID, he's fine now. Oh, really? Yeah. On route. They Come thought on. it was. They thought it was a stroke. Or yeah, it, it was actually a blood clots on his brain after he had coronavirus. Oh. He was, yeah, and he it was mild case, a little bit of fever, but then he started uh, like losing balance in speech. He didn't know where he was, so they thought maybe it was tumor. But then it was blood clots because of the Good. virus. Yeah. yeah, I remember now when we had a yeah. So he's the same age as your boys, right? Yeah, he yeah. just turned 13. thirteen, like them. Yeah, he's a oh teen. Well, they have a stroke at thirteen. Kind of... So did they have to remove the blood clot, or did it just? Yeah, have... it's it's the body's absorbing it right now because he's you know they, he's on medication, but he's doing rehab, um, how to walk, talk, and stuff like that. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he's okay. 30 days or, or like around 30 days after he had the virus. Mm, 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 mm. Which wow. was a mild case. He just stayed at home, quarantine, nothing much, but then. Wow, so do they expect him to fully recover or? Yeah, yeah, they, they are, yeah. So thanks wow. for your prayers. Oh, you're welcome. Praise God. Hi, Kristen. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to see you. It's good, good to morning. see you. Hi, Dan and Julie. Hello, Robin. Good morning. What's up? Good morning. Everybody's kind of low key this morning. Where's the chatter? I know. <laughs> oh, we'll get some chatter better. after the service. I think. Y'all go partying last night. What's up? What's up? Seriously, what's going on? We partied <laughs> in the rain. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Miss Deborah Brown. Hi. It's good to see you this morning. Well, you Thank need to get another spot to, to do your Zoom in. So we don't be <laughs> Deborah, you're, the Lord, you're not going to let her live those lips down. I'm are you? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. Jealous. She knows better. Deborah, we know you're full of love. <laughs> Thank you. <Deborah. laughs> No, we don't know that. <laughs> Mama D. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Mm. Look at them lashes. Go on, better eye for me, girl. Better eye. Come on. Come on, Deb. <laughs> Go on, the Lord. Go on. The Lord, leave her alone. <laughs> no, Lord, just cause we on. Me. I'm not going to stop just because we on Zoom. <laughs> I hear that the Lord's on there talking trash. Yes. I know. Hey, Dolores, Dolores got her eight hours of sleep last night. We better watch sure. out. <laughs> uh, she had she had four cups of coffee. I hear her on TV talking trash. What? Oh, is that talking? Oh, that's Dolores. <laughs> <laughs> I walked by the TV before I even logged on the computer. I said, who is that talking trash? Let me get on the hey. computer so I can hey. tell her out. Janine. Oh, yeah. yes, that's just her nature, you know. That's just Dee's nature. Hey, everybody. Hi, Patricia. Hi. 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 Janine. Yes, ma'am. I have always considered you a daughter. I'm not expecting a daughter. Uh, oh, note this. I am not beyond turning you oh, over my me. That's okay. <laughs> hold on. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Just so you know. She's okay, slapping the belt. She's slapping the belt on. She's slapping the belt on. It was it was fine right here, and then now you just made it weird. <laughs> okay, we gotta keep it church level. Keep right. it church level. When Janine and Mark got married, we were they had their reception at uh, Jesse's, uh, Jesse and uh, Laura's Laura. house, uh -huh. and. Uh, when they left, all the everybody went. Everybody from the reception just went out to you know say bye to them. But I couldn't do it. I was crying a river. Oh, she was. She yes, was. I was crying a river. She was. So, that entitles me to beat your butt. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right, Dolores. I would. I would take the beat down with honor. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sorry.
sorry, guys. Y'all don't get us started, for please. anyone who might be visiting, yeah. this is not normal yeah. church banter. Yes, it is, Leo. Yes, it is. <laughs> Good morning, my <laughs> church. Please, please reference uh, Old Testament references to laying holy hands on people. <laughs> people are righteous, righteous hands strike me, strike me and I will count it as a blessing. Oh, my gosh. Take I'm just appreciating how quiet up. Jeff Hughes is. Around. Jeff Hughes is not saying a word. <laughs> Does that surprise anyone? Does that surprise anyone? He gets enough of you to come on that. Man, I'm, I'm well, we went from no banter to quite a bit of fun banter. There you yeah. go, bro. Yeah. Hey. Oh, hey, Shirley. Shirley, oh, you have a good one. Hey, Shirley. Hey, hey, Shirley. Hey, hey, Shirley. Hey, Shirley. Good hey, morning, hey, McDonald. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Lily, Lily. Hey, Lily. Oh, Lily Bonner. Hey. That's a nice picture. Hi, Lily. This is Tika Lily. Last time you were trying to figure out who I was. Uh -huh. Lily, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. This is Kibra. You were wondering who I was at the prayer meeting. At the what? The prayer meeting? Yes. Oh, yeah. I did. Uh, I wasn't there. Yeah, you're right. That's me. And that was a, that was a white guy on the other phone. On the phone. <laughs> um, What's up, brother? Hey, hey Darren. Hey. Um, David. David. Hi, David. How are you doing, David. brother? Wake up, David. Wake David. up. <laughs> hey, David. Good morning, bro. Connor grew a mustache. Did you just oh, wake up, David? It. Connor yeah, grew a mustache. Yes, Connor grew a mustache. <laughs> What's up, Felicia? Hi, how are you? Good, good, hey, good. good. And Lord, these are my birthday earrings from Bonnie. Ooh, spotlight, like Felicia, so we can see some earrings. Ooh, girl, come on. Hey, Christina. I saw uh, everybody. Oh, the bond rods are here. Oh, the bond I'm rods. Loving are here. Those I know those are cute. Nice. 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 Don't lay those around. I love don't lay those Lord. around. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> Hello. Don't leave those at church. You might not get them back. That's right. Don't lay them down, my man. <laughs> yeah. I think I might do a drive by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Felicia, Felicia, huh? I trade you a soul food dinner for those earrings. Uh -oh. That's my Don't earrings. believe us. Why? Don't believe us. You won't even Hello, give us Mayfield. a gift. Don't, don't believe that soul food. Hello, Mayfield. Actually, right I'm Shirley. Is that right, Shirley? I'm not sure. You won't even Felicia. give us a biscuit, so oh, don't believe no soul food. Hey, Bonnie. <laughs> Yes, he said she gave me those earrings. <laughs> Morning, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. If you're watching online, we have taken family to a whole nother level. We're talking about corporal punishment. <laughs> so. Uh, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, yeah, it's already been an entertaining morning on Zoom. And I think it's only going to get better from here. So I'm so excited to uh, to see everyone this morning. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday. Just two quick reminders about Zoom. Please turn your cameras on um, so, so that we can see everyone. And the pre-worship fellowship is awesome. But from now on, please uh, keep yourselves on mute as we go about the rest of our service. But great to be together. Um, I'm going to kick it over to Jeff, and he's going to open us up in a prayer. Well, good morning, everybody. Let's go to God in prayer. Father in heaven, it's good to be together. It's good to uh, just come together and worship you. You know, <laughs> I look forward to a worship service every Sunday and I'm starting to like Zoom. I mean, it's still not as good as being in person, but just the fellowship beforehand and just listening is hilarious and getting called out is fun. But I pray that 
even the fellowship is something that can spur us on, something that can get us primed and ready to think about you. I pray that the songs can get us, just move us and get us in the mindset to listen to the sermon. I pray that the sermon is great. I pray that the communion is a uh, very uh, good as well, Father. I just pray that the whole service can be something that's encouraging and gets us ready for the rest of the week and can bring us closer to you and one another. It's in Christ. Amen. This is mighty to save. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of the Savior, the hope of nature. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save.
Well, that'll give you goosebumps. Come on. <laughs> I say we're having church here, amen. At this time, um, we're going to uh, go into our offering time. At the, during our pre-worship meeting, I thought today you're probably going to laugh. You're probably going to cry. Maybe you had some tears during that song. I know I felt like crying. And you're probably going to think a little bit today. So you're going to have a full day. You may need a nap after worship today. Amen. As we get into the offering time here, uh, we're going to be in Luke chapter 19. And, uh, of course, we're going to pick up Luke's uh, sort of uh, continuation in Acts today for the sermon. Uh, we have a special treat for you. But Luke 19, uh, Luke uh, brings attention to a story here, the story of Zacchaeus, the tax collector. And uh, as we give our offering this morning, we're just kind of going to have a thought around this story. It says, Jesus entered Jericho, Luke 19, verse 1, and was passing through. The man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and saw him. Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of the center. Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. If I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. And she said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man too, the son of Abraham, the son of man came to seek and to save what was lost. You know, so many uh, incredible things about this passage, the, the fact that there's a man running is uh, a little bit of a shameful thing. There's also the fact that this man not only runs, but he climbs a tree, which is also pretty incredible. The fact that Zacchaeus is a short man, shout out to all the short people out there, amen. But what's, but what's really cool is Zacchaeus' heart. And as he's being, obviously as a tax collector, the fact that Jesus is going to visit him is somewhat scandalous. And that as a tax collector, that his heart is so full and so open and so responsive to Jesus that he goes, I will give half, half of all my possessions to the poor. But then if I've cheated anyone, I will pay back four times. And then what it puts to mind for me is when we're sold out to Jesus, when we really have been touched, when we really have been moved, when we really have been inspired by Jesus. I mean, we do have this heart that we really, we kind of do some of the most scandalous things. We run, we climb, we, 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 we will do anything, we will give up anything. And it is just that open heartedness that Jesus, I am all in for you. You know, I, I sense at the Gateway City Church, I believe we are ex an extremely, uh, I'd say we're a very generous church. I don't want to be extreme, <laughs> okay? But we are certainly a very generous church. And um, I was just in communication with the brothers and sisters in Liberia, and they are about to, you know, start digging ground on the water well that we are contributing to. And it made me think about the church that is giving generously to make that happen for the Liberia church and that community in and around it. But I know surely that uh, we can always use the challenge. And, and this is the challenge, not that we give more, but that our hearts are always, we're connected with Jesus in such a way that at any time we're really still, we're still really to run, jump, climb, give, our whole hearts, because we have been touched and impacted by our Lord and Jesus. And so with that, I thought that's a good thought for us today as we, 
as we give our offering together. So I really don't want this time, and I know all of us are paying electronically, and even as we have this time, we'll pray. You probably don't have to do anything, you know what I mean? But I don't want you to be disengaged from this very important part of our worship. Amen? Let's pray. God, we, uh, we love you so much, and, and I pray, God, that our hearts are always uh, touched by you, moved by you, but God, today, still, God, we're willing to run, jump, climb. We're willing to do whatever to to connect with you, to see you, to be close to you, Lord. Please help us to keep those hearts and that our hearts are always about the poor. God, just not the poor in, around the world, although we always want to care about the world, but we want to care about the poor that we, we bump into in our own communities. God, help our hearts to be like Zacchaeus, which is a phenomenal example for us. Uh, I'm sure, Luke, the Spirit led him to write this because this is not... This is a great example for us to follow. Anyway, Lord, we love you so much and we thank you. We don't deserve anything we have. I do thank you for the generosity of the church. I do lift up the Liberian brothers and sisters. I gotta pray that the well is dug. And I know one of the challenges is being able to protect it so that it doesn't get broken by those in community, in the community. So I pray God that it'll be really well secu secured, it'll be, you know, taken care of, and it will be able to provide water for the disciples and for that community for many, many, many years to come. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, everybody who's having a great time at worship today. I have just a couple of announcements I wanted to go through. Uh, first of all, we have, of course, our ongoing uh, call, uh, call in prayer time tomorrow night and also Zoom prayer time with the elders and Subers, respectively. Uh, and then later this week, we have quiet times with the Hawkins on Tuesdays and the Moldens on Thursdays. The links for all of those can be found in the app, but also in the description for this video. Um, we are continuing our conflict resolution classes. Most of us will, are probably on week four. Yes, week four. <laughs> you should have module two. If you do not have your uh, uh, module two, reach out to your family group leader, let them know, and they can get uh, your module two, module two booklet for you. Uh, and uh, then also three weeks from today, we will be meeting as a Heartland region on Zoom. And our own Tim Schmidt is going to be preaching an amazing message on perseverance. Uh, so keep the, keep the date for that. And uh, then finally, uh, I'm happy to announce that the calendar has been updated. Woo! And all of the um, dates for the coming year for 2021 are now all on the uh, website calendar. Uh, so you can check that out too. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Bill and he's going to preach the word. Thanks, Kathy. No one gets fired up about a calendar like Kathy Rosario, and uh, we're so grateful for her. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are continuing in our theme for the year uh, about the gospel being good news, with the emphasis on news. So far, we've explored uh, the book of Acts all the way up through Peter's explanation of what does this mean. See, news works in very simple ways. When something's reported, there are three questions that are always asked. What happened? What does it mean? And then what shall we do? And as we start to think about the fact that the news given back then was that Jesus was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, you with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross, but God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. You know, Peter kind of goes on to explain even what that means, giving a proof text that you can't put your hope in being from the line of David because David was be dead, buried, and his tomb was there to this day. And it led people to ask the questions where we left off in a cliffhanger cliffhanger way last week with the question, what shall we do? 
And what we want to do this week is that we want to pick up the story right there because this is how news works. We got a chance to look at what happened. We had a chance to listen to Peter explain to us what does this mean. But now we need to know what shall we do. So let's let's go to the text. Uh, we're going to be in uh, Acts chapter 2 beginning in verse 36 as a little bit of review at the end of the explanation. It says, therefore, let all of Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you've crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words, he warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. You know, the amazing thing about this reality is that this happened in real time. This was something that was that was explained, that was preached, and this was something that was happening in real time. Oh, wait, I, I'm sorry, what? Oh, it looks like we actually have a reporter there on the scene. Hadrianus, one of our men in the field, actually is right there. Uh, let's go live to Hadrianus right now. Thanks, Bill. This is Hadrianus reporting to you live from downtown Jerusalem, where this amazing event just happened, and we're just now getting on the scene. And honestly, we don't know what happened. However, we have four people that say they were involved and know exactly what happened. We're going to give you their eyewitness account. So, guys, what happened here today? You said what happened? What happened? You didn't see what happened? You didn't hear that wind, but didn't see the wind? Crazy. Man, come on, like, it was crazy. It's a first, before I even get started, I have to say thank you to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, okay? Yes. Come on. Yes. You know, without him, literally none of this would be possible. That's true. But what happened, you know, the wind came and like, it was like the spirit just came upon us. I don't even know what happened. I don't know crazy. exactly. I don't know exactly what there was, but I just started speaking a language I never spoke. I can't even tell you what it was. Yeah. I couldn't tell you what it was either. I just heard him start saying stuff. I heard her start saying stuff. He's been looking like that for the past 10 hours. Man, and then, oh shoot, then my boy Peter started preaching. Woo! Wow, Come on. Fire. Man, like, yes. first off, shout out to all, all our guys out there who had to pick up their father's trade. They said he yes. wasn't good enough. Mm. He was one, that's one of the apostles, okay? Right. Okay? Yeah. Second Joel? Who preaches out of Joel chapter 2? I couldn't even recite Joel chapter 2, if you ask me. You know, I'm more of a Torah type guy. But man, <laughs> he got everybody convicted. Cut to the heart. Everybody that was there that was, was convicted. Crazy. Come remember on when they, Remember when they said, are we drunk? Man, they asked us, was we drunk? The audacity. Can, that like, was not what, what happened. Uh, let me tell you, I'm not a lightweight, okay? Now, have you guys been drinking? Uh, with dinner, of course. <laughs> but yesterday. Yeah. You know. Next question. Not. Is there a significance to the number 3,000? Well, well, 3,000, they, uh, if you've read the, the Torah, you would know that as Moses came down from the mountain and was about to deliver the law, he, he called those who were with God and the Levites came forward. And if you remember, there were, there were those that, were, that died because of their worship of the golden calf that was brought to them and, and they made and that number was 3,000 and so as you think about it you realize that the, when the law was given 3,000 died but here as freedom is given through Jesus 3,000 are given life and so the law gives death but Jesus gives life and that's the Holy Spirit okay my man yes. We have an individual here with us who wants to respond to your claims. I know that you all think you're special because you baptized 3,000 people today, and that's just adorable. But I'm here to let you know today 
that I represent the majority opinion. You do not represent the majority. I represent the majority. Mm -hmm. I am a direct descendant of the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. I serve in the house of the priests. I give a tenth of everything I have, including my cinnamon, and I attend Sabbath every single week, and I wear my mask everywhere I go. So I don't understand how you can sit there on judgment on me and say that I am responsible for, the, for murdering your Jesus. Thank you for that question. It was so good and so bold, and we need to answer it. We really yeah, do. I got this. I'll, I'll take this one, actually. Okay. Please. Um, well, Kath and I, thank you again so much for, for asking your question. And, you know, I really appreciate that you're someone who keeps the law. Um, I just want to remind you that, that Jesus is the one who fulfilled the law. And he, we all took part in his death. We are all guilty. Whether you put the nails in him or not, we're all guilty. As, as a teacher of the law, you'll remember that in the law, sacrifice is required for yep. sin. And now Jesus... The Jesus that you crucified. Yup. He is the sacrifice. And that's why you're guilty. Hey, talk about it. Okay. We're all guilty. Yup. There are reports that Peter said, repent and be baptized. Explain. I mean, first off, dude, Petey went crazy when he said <laughs> that. Yes. Come on, man. Do repent and be baptized, right? We have to... Not only change, acknowledge yeah. our sin, right. and, and turn away from it, Yo, come on. but we also get to participate in the death, okay. burial, and resurrection of the Jesus who we crucified. Okay. You know, it's more than just symbolic. I mean, we did walk down into the baptism pits, right? True, true, and we true. came back out on the other side, changed people. Yes. But it's more than a symbol. Mm -hmm. It's a walk of faith. Mm -hmm. It's to acknowledge our participation oh. in what happened. Yep. No, that's a good word. This is the way. What he said. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, welcome back. So tell me, what's next? Hmm. I mean, I'm trying to baptize the rest of the world, yeah, right? I'm ready to baptize people, right? yeah. Matter of fact, have you been baptized? I don't think that wait, counts, Wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah. Oh. We oh, need a full, full submersion. We need a full God. submersion. Full submersion. Wait, wait. Come on. God. Come on. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, uh, Bill, I'm, I'm sorry for the interruption. Uh, our camera guy just got carried off by those guys. It looks like they're heading to the river. We're going to try to stay close and we'll keep you abreast of what's going on. This is Well, brothers and sisters, I think we just participated in the first post-game interview ever in humankind. And I think it's awesome that uh, we might have lost a cameraman, but we gained a brother in Christ. Can I get a witness, church? Anyway, you know, so much about that was just was just so fun to do. But honestly, you have to remember, these events happen to real in real time and real people. And there was real struggle involved. Coming into a, a celebration of Pentecost, these people were confronted with news they had never heard before. 3,000 responded. The number 3,000 might be an exact number, it might be, uh, it might be uh, a, a storytelling device of Luke, but what we know is that thousands responded immediately to the invitation of the news. Because remember that all of this is taking place because of the question, what shall we do? And one of the things that's important is to really hear the answer, repent and be baptized. You know, the thing that strikes me as a teacher is just how simple this answer is. You know, the question is not a new one, and the answer wasn't new either. You know, Luke does a great job of telling the story of John the Baptist. You know, as he comes, he's preaching a repentance of, or, or he's preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. As people come to him, you know what they are, they're asking? 
And of course, this is all found in Luke chapter 3, verses 3 through 14. People of all walks of life are coming and asking, hey, what shall we do? You know, people that uh, that are just kind of making it. He's saying, if you have two tunics, share with those who do not have any tunics. He's, he's talking to corrupt uh, uh, soldiers who say, well, what shall we do? Corrupt soldiers are coming to be baptized. Why? Because the news about the kingdom being at hand, that there is a new king, there is a new kingdom, there is a new way, not one wrapped up in law and temple, but one wrapped up by a wild man out in the desert. What do I need to do? What shall I do? The answer is always the same. Repent. Repent and be baptized. Corrupt soldiers, what shall we do? Stop exhorting people. People were coming and asking the question. They all got the same answer. Repent and be baptized. It's interesting in Luke's telling of it that the only ones that get rebuked are the ones who are not asking the question, what shall we do? Those who didn't ask the questions kind of range from the, uh, the, the scandalous, sinful Herod who had taken his brother's wife but the ones who really felt the heaviest uh, rebuke coming from John were the ones that thought that they were okay. Those that trusted in what they've already had. I'm a child of Abram. We have a temple. We make sacrifices. So therefore, what? why do I need to do it? To them, John says, you of all people should know. You need to repent, be, you need to repent and be baptized. You know, it's interesting as John would pick up the story in John chapter three, we have the original version of Nick at night. Nicodemus, a teacher of the law, comes to Jesus at night. He's, he's, uh, he's wondering, am I ready for the kingdom? I have no doubt that this Jesus is someone that, uh, that uh, is, uh, is who he claims to be, you know, and you can tell Nicodemus is kind of kind of recognizing uh, the Lord there because he's he's like, hey, Jesus, no one can do what you're doing unless God sent him. Man, you are awesome. And Jesus just cuts right to the chase. He cuts right to the chase. It says, uh, you can't see the kingdom unless you're born again. Nicodemus, uh, you know, Jesus and John is always thinking up here. Everyone else around Jesus is always thinking down here. Uh, Nicodemus questions saying, hey, uh, how can a man be born when he is old? He's not going to enter a second time into his mother's womb, is he? Ew. And of course, Jesus is like, oh, you can't even see the kingdom unless you are born of the water and spirit. You know you must be born again. And it's interesting, as it says, the scripture says, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh. No, duh. But spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it, it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. Now, let me ask you, doesn't that sound just like what we read in Acts chapter two? Doesn't that kind of give you the exact fulfillment of what Jesus was saying? And if you're a close Bible student, you'll also remember that water, spirit, and wind were all there in Genesis 1 in creation. This idea, this, this searching of Nicodemus is begging the question, he just wanted to know truth. Jesus is saying, it's not enough to know. You must be born again. What shall we do? You need to repent and be baptized. That's why uh, in Acts chapter two, Peter is so straightforward and so on top of the game. When, when they ask, what shall we do? He's not preaching a brand new message. He's preaching one that had been taught since John the Baptist. There's only one thing you can do. There's only one thing God is calling you to do. And that's repent and be baptized. And I want you to think, nowadays, it's gotten more confusing, hasn't it? You know, there's so many variant teachings on the plan of salvation. It kind of makes it kind of makes it hard to understand 
when you look at this passage and you see the simple truth, repent and be baptized, it's hard to imagine where did some of these other teachings come from that aren't even in the Bible? The variant teaching of accepting Jesus as your personal savior. You can't even find that in scripture. What, would, what, what does the Bible simply say to, to someone like that? If you've, if you've encountered this uh, Christianity only through this personal invitation, you need to ask yourself today, what shall I do? Because the answer is simple. Repent and be baptized. You know, one that I was personally taught as, as a young man and, you know, feeling convicted and honestly just guilt-ridden, full of sin, was the idea of saying a sinner's prayer. You know, I, I, I love the fact that when the crowd asked, brothers, what shall we do? Jesus, uh, Peter did not say, we'll say a prayer. <laughs> he, he, he gave them a, a much different answer than the one I was given when I was, when I was taught that as a young man. Well, what shall I do? We'll, we'll say this prayer. But where is that in scripture? Where is that in, in the text? It's nowhere to be found. But the one thing that we do have is a simple answer. Repent and be baptized. If you, if you know, uh, you know people that have been kind of, their experience of Christianity came through the fact that they've, they've said a prayer. And, and again, not down on it. It'll get you aware that you need help. I think the loving thing to do is to give them simple answer to the news. You need to repent. Be you need to repent and be baptized. You know, of course, there is that that last variant teaching that's happening more recently, actually, where people who have come to believe now see that oh wow, baptism really is in the Bible, but they they teach baptism in a way of kind of a public act of an inward faith. The problem is is that there's no message of repentance ever associated with that. Again. There is a simple answer to a very important question. What shall we do? The answer is always going to be repent and be baptized. You know, we have, we have a, a, a culture that is radically different than the first century, but radically the same. We need to re-embrace this idea that repentance is a radical change of mind. It's not an easy one. It's not, it's not something that we could just do haphazardly. Repentance comes when you have a deep understanding of what God calls sin, and you make the radical decision that I'm not going to trust in, in my, my own discovery of salvation. I'm just going to do what the text says. Repent and be baptized. I know we we don't want to be jerks and kind of go after people on on a witch hunt and say you know and start throwing things in the face trying to shut uh shut uh you know the door of the kingdom in people's faces by saying you got it wrong. We we're not about that anymore, but you have to have a deep conviction. It's just as unloving to allow someone to believe something that's not even in the text without coming to them and saying, you know, that's not how the news was received when it was first spoken, right? Because I can tell you, all these variant traditions of the plan of salvation did not exist until 400 years for the earliest one after this moment, and for the latest one, you know, especially the last one, this is something that has just kind of come into Christendom in the last two decades. So brothers and sisters, I want you to be reassured, but I also want us to be convicted on the simplicity of the message. What shall we do? Repent and be baptized. And if you're visiting with us this morning and you're just kind of watching in on YouTube and you're, you're kind of wondering, well, what shall I do? Well, find someone who is a disciple of Jesus. Reach out 
and say, I need to know exactly what repentance means. And then once you come to a deep conviction of what repentance means, don't put it off. Don't wait for some baptistry service. Don't, don't make baptism some gimmick that happens later. In the first century, they did not consider belief as some sort of intellectual thing that you've accepted. In the first century, they knew what you believed by what you did, which is why the question is, what shall we do? Not what shall we believe? And it's why the answer is always the same from John the Baptist to Jesus, to the disciples and to everyone that would follow in the manner of discipleship. The answer is always the same to the question, what shall we do? Repent and be baptized. Vince, I throw it over to you. Amen. Thank you, Bill. And thank you, Kendall, McKenzie, Jeff, Ronnie, and Kathaniahs. I told you, you were probably going to laugh, cry, and think. And uh, we are going to uh, appreciate Bill very thorough. Uh, Ellen Hadrianus as well. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you, Bill, for a very thorough uh, teaching this morning. And so I want to look at a verse here. We're going to, you know, transition into our communion and to a couple of other questions. You know, Bill said it's simple, right? It's simple. God's plan is simple. But I will say that it ain't easy. It ain't easy. There are things that are simple to do but they're not easy. You know, like staying out of debt, simple, but it ain't easy, right? <laughs> um, obeying God, simple, but it's not easy. And so I wanna turn our attention to a couple of other questions here in Romans chapter six. Very familiar if you've been around for a while. I'm gonna read all 14 of these verses because I think they're appropriate as we think about and respond to the message and as we prepare for the communion. What shall we do? And I think the message you might say 25, 30 years later, and some of us have been around for that amount of time, 25 or 30 years, if you consider it's around 30 something AD when, when that is said, what, you know, what shall we do? And Romans is written maybe about 25 to 30 years later what are they still saying? What shall we say, chapter six, verse one? The question is, what shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means, you know what I mean? Exclamation point. We died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? Or don't you know, brothers and sisters, that all of us who were baptized in the Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him in baptism into death in order that just as Christ raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, that we too may live a new life. If we have been united with him like this in his death, we will certainly also be united with him in his resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with him in baptism so that the old body of sin might be done away with. See, that's what that repentance and that baptism, that's what it does. It, it gets rid of that old self. Because anyone who has died has been free from sin. Verse eight, now if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires. Do not offer the parts of your body to sin as instruments of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life 
and offer the parts of your body to him as instruments of righteousness. For sin shall not be your master, because you are not under law, but under grace. Amen. I want to remind us that what we do as disciples, that it's not just after that baptism, but we look forward to a resurrection. Of course, we all, as, as Jeff so well pointed out, we certainly participated in that death, burial, and resurrection, but we still await. We still await another death, another burial, or resurrection, and we'll all be raised together. But I want to encourage us, and I want to remind us, and if, you, if you've not had that faith, that repentance, that baptism, you know, at the beginning that, hey, we're there for you, but all of us that have, I want to remind us that we still, like Zacchaeus, we still need to be willing to run, to jump, to climb, to offer our entire selves, not just our money, but our whole bodies. We don't offer our bodies as instruments to sin, but we instead, we offer them to righteousness, and that is who we are. That is who we're called to be as disciples, and we cannot ever forget that. And so as we gather around here right now, and we take our weekly meal together, I want us to remember the, the beginning for us all. I want us to remember the day when we were baptized. Remember the Bible studies you went through. Remember, it was simple, but it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. And that's the commitment we've made. I appreciate Jeff said, what are you going to do now? I'm going to go baptize the whole world. I want everyone to participate in what I am. Listen, it's simple, but it ain't easy. And I know it's not easy for us today, but we will, we will finish this race. We will join, we will be a part of that great resurrection. Amen? Let's go to God in prayer as we commune together and uh, we take our weekly meal. It's a small meal. It's more like a snack, but it's a meal. Amen. Let's pray. God, uh, we are just super grateful that God, you've, you've blessed us the way you have. Uh, God, I just want to, uh, we want to lift you up. And God, that you had this incredible plan for humanity. I mean, God, no sooner than we, we blow it in the garden. God, you began a plan of, of, of redemption. You've been a, you, be, you began a plan where you want to you wanna heal us. You began a plan of restoration and bringing us back. And God, we're grateful for that. And we're grateful that you saw fit after many attempts, God. Certainly, you, were, you just came down. And God, you, you, you showed us, you, you showed us by your, by your death, by your burial, by your resurrection. And, and though we simply get to participate in that death, burial, resurrection, we know that it's not easy. We know that we're all in some ways, we're in conflict, God, with you starting early in life. We battle, God, just uh, you want us to do, you want us to follow certain paths. And I appreciate, God, you don't hold a gun to our head. You don't force us into anything, God. You are so gracious, so merciful. You are so patient, so kind, so gentle, so faithful. Everything about you, God, you are so patient with us, but you do want all of us to be saved. And Father, though, you, you, you had this plan for us, God, and, and, and though we end up in conflict with you very often, and we certainly end up in conflict with one another on this earth, and God, we even have our own internal conflict, Father. I pray, God, that we will, Father, we will just turn ourselves in. And we will sort of be like Zacchaeus. And Father, we will stop fighting. That it's not about how much money we make. It's not a about, Father, you know, how much education we have or any of these things, Father, but we just want to be people that we, we really do. We're all in for you. We, we're totally committed to you. We, we love you. We honor you. And Father, we, we want to live into the promise you made, you made to us. Father, we want to really help as many as possible to be able to also live into that promise. God, we love you as we take communion together. Help us to remember all of these things. God, help us to reflect on all of these things. May we be challenged, convicted, and ultimately walk out of here inspired because we, 
We've been renewed in an incredible way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I'd say we had church today. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you've had a great time today. Um, we are going to, as become our custom, we're going to end our time together with some fellowship for anyone that wants to stick around. Um, we're going to breakout rooms. You just sort of go in there automatically. If you don't, you can shut your phones off. Um, there are some people that like to hang around and get some fellowship in afterwards. So again, I guess I just want, want to mention this. If, if you do not have your module two for our conflict, conflict, wow. and conflict dynamics class, please contact your family group leader soon as possible uh, as classes will continue this week and so hope you're learning a lot look forward to hearing your feedback from some of this uh, just really a huge shout out to all the house church leaders that are teaching this and um yeah praise god anyway church god bless you may god keep you and bless you and strengthen you throughout the week um and with that you are dismissed for fellowship have a great sunday